Good morning. Welcome to Gateway Bali. We're so glad to have you join us this morning. Today is March 14th and we're online only, but it's also the Nepi holiday here in Bali, where the entire island shuts down for 24 hours. You can't leave your house, you can't turn lights on, and you can't make any noise. But the internet is on, hopefully, and we can watch this video, but just keep the volume down. So, today starts our 21 days of prayer. And if you get the email, download the calendar, or we'll provide a link during this video in the description for you to download the calendar. And for the next 21 days, let's focus on praying. And if prayer is part of your regular routine, amen, keep going. If it's not, then find this to be a prayer challenge. 21-12, for 12 minutes a minimum each day for 21 days, pray and uh Think about the Lord, think about his word, put your petitions out there and follow the calendar and pray for certain things. And at the end, we'll see what God does. And uh, at least we'll be connecting with him and our hearts will be more connected. And that's really our focus. So this week on Thursday night, we will have a prayer uh, online prayer meeting on Google Meet. So you can download that app and then click the link in the email. We'll also send it out by WhatsApp so that you can have it and join an online prayer for this Thursday night at seven o'clock. Also, if you have prayer requests, send it into the Bali prayer line and we can pray for you and we'll send it out to all our prayer warriors, but also pray on Thursday night for you. We also have, uh, we're trying to create a uh, photo gateway church directory for all of us to put our photos on there, put our some information so we can see one another, we can pray for one another, we can know each other, remember each other's names. This is a great way also to develop church community among our fellowship. So you can follow the links on the email or WhatsApp Jane Patterson and she will get you connected with that. Finally, thank you for all those who've been giving to Gateway. Uh, continually to sacrificially give, especially during this time. We've cut our expenses down, but we still need to meet the budget. So thank you for all those that have been giving and continue to give. And uh, our hearts and, and, and prayers are with all of you in these times of difficulty and challenging times. So God bless you. So enjoy our worship uh, together with a uh, song with Chris and then with hearing the word about prayer with Dave. God bless you all. Good morning, church. So it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pre-recorded, of course, but if, if you're watching this on Sunday morning, um, right now in, in Bali, if you're living in Bali right now, Sunday, Sunday morning is Nyepi Day, which means the silent day. It's, it's, very, it's well known to the international world that, you know, that Bali always take one, one day of the year to, do, to have a silent day, no power, no electricity, well, no lights, at least, no, 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 no activities, and it's a good time actually for us to use this moment just to give our time to God, you know, and just to praise and to worship Him this morning. Um, so yeah, so this morning as we come to the Lord, you know, enjoy this worship, praise and worship, and, this, and the Word of God by Pastor uh, by pa Dave Patterson this morning, and just enjoy yourself this morning in in the, in the silent of the day. Enjoy the goodness of God, and we're gonna start with "Come, now stand to worship."
it's a time to worship. Oh, come now, now it's a time to give your oh, come, come, just as you are to worship. Oh, come, 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 just as you are. God, this morning, we're going to lift our praise call. This is my desire. Lord, we prepare our heart for the word of God this morning. Lord, speak to us.
Good day. Welcome to GCC Online. Today we're continuing in the series about the habits of Jesus, and this is the habit of prayer, and it's entitled Connection on Display. So what did Jesus do? The key verse for this time is from Luke 5, 17. It says, Yet Jesus himself frequently withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. There are several examples of that. Uh, when Jesus prayed, he prayed when he was busy. In uh, the first chapter of Mark, it talks about him teaching in the synagogue there, and he um, healed a, a person or cast out a demon, and then he went to Peter's house for lunch afterwards, and Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed, and Jesus raised her up and healed her. And word about that spread. And then after sunset, because it was the Sabbath, people from all over had um, brought, brought sick people and those possessed by demons to cast them out. And it said that he um, healed everybody, everybody that was there. So it was probably late at night and it was a short night for him because it tells us that um, Jesus got up early in the morning when it was still dark and departed and went out to a deserted place, and there he spent time in prayer. This was a habit that Jesus often did, even when he was busy, and it was gonna be a busy the next day too. So, uh, Jesus also prayed before big decisions. About a year into his ministry, he had lots of followers, lots of popularity, but um, the, the religious leaders had turned against him because he was confronting them about their hypocrisy, and they were jealous of the crowds that were following him. And um, knowing that he had just a, a couple years left, he um, was going to choose uh, from that group of disciples. There were a lot of disciples. Disciples just means learner. And they followed Jesus around. There were followers. There were disciples that were a little more committed. And he was going to choose 12 of them to be apostles. And so the night before, it says, um, now it was during this time that Jesus went out to the mountain to pray and he spent all night in prayer to God. And when morning came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them whom he also named apostles. An apostle means a uh, person who's sent out. And so they were gonna be carrying on the ministry of Jesus after his um, crucifixion, uh, resurrection and ascension. So after big decisions, then after big news, at the, or bad news, sorry, um, John had been arrested. John was his cousin, John the Baptist, and he had been arrested by King Herod. And there was this big party and a dancing girl uh, who pleased the crowds, um, uh, asked for the head of John the Baptist when Herod asked her what it is she wanted because she, he wanted to reward her. And so he, not to be embarrassed in front of the crowds, he had John killed. And news of this came to Jesus. And at that time, it says, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. He's up on Lake Galilee. And um, hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And so he might have had some quiet time alone. Um, but maybe not very long before the crowds arrived. And he had compassion on them, and he taught them all day long. And there were 5,000 men, maybe 5,000 women, maybe a couple thousand children, so a whole bunch of people. And it was far away from any towns or stores, restaurants, anything like that. So um, Jesus uh, told his disciples to, that they were going to feed him. They brought him some loaves and fishes. He spread it. You know the story. And they fed everybody and had basketfuls left over afterwards. Well, it was getting dark and they needed to uh, get on their way. And so Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat and go back to, to across the lake from where they'd come. And then he would dismiss the crowds. And so at this time, uh, we see after this a big event that um, after he had sent the crowds away, still in chapter 14, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. And so what did he pray about? We don't know. But possibly still processing the, the death of his cousin. Um, 
praying about uh, processing this big event and the miracle and the crowds that um, were going to come and want to make him king in, in the future. And so just talking through that uh, with his father before he goes back down to the lake and walks on water. Then uh, later on, uh, it talks about Jesus praying again and he's during a time of reflecting. It says, once when Jesus was praying by himself and his disciples were nearby, he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? So something in his conversation with the Father sparked him to want to ask his disciples. Now, of course, Jesus knew what the crowds thought, but he wanted to hear it from them. And this is the time when Peter makes his famous uh, declaration that, that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, uh, the Son of God. And so that's kind of a turning point for the disciples in their spiritual journey there. And then um, went on a retreat uh, shortly after this, um, the same chapter, about eight days after these things, um, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. So it's kind of like a spiritual retreat, um, had a mountaintop experience up there. Uh, that's also when the transfiguration happened and uh, the three uh, apostles could could see Jesus being glorified and also being visited by Elijah and Moses and um, that event there where they could really see uh, that Jesus was divinity. Moving on, um, Jesus prayed as an example. He often prayed um, so that his disciples could watch and listen in. And this time it says, now Jesus was praying in a certain place and when he stopped, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. It's interesting to me that it's not till chapter 11 that the, the disciples are interested enough to in how Jesus prayed, very much different from what the Pharisees were teaching about how to pray. And um, they wanted to learn as well. And we'll talk about Jesus' response shortly. Another time when Jesus prayed was in a crisis. So this is after the Last Supper and he'd gone out to the Garden of Gethsemane and the crucifixion and um, the trial, the torture and all that was soon to come, it was very soon. And I don't think Jesus was necessarily afraid of, of suffering physically, although that's not pleasant for any human. And he felt the pain for sure. But, um, the real thing was, was taking on the sins of the world, all of the sins, all time, everybody, um, from creation until the end of time, all that sin was on Jesus. And, um, and in that process that God the Father uh, turned his back on him, and Jesus on the cross said, God, why have you forsaken him? Well, Jesus knew, uh, but, he knew that this was going to happen, and he said, um, Father, if you're willing, take this cup away from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. And so in this crisis, um, the hardest part of Jesus' earthly life is facing, getting ready for this, this event. Um, Jesus turned to his Father. Then there are several other occasions um, that Jesus prayed. Not, this isn't a complete list, but during his baptism, before meals, um, while healing people, while blessing children, while talking to the Jewish leaders. Um, upon return of the 70, he'd sent 70 of his followers out you know, on a ministry trip and they came back and reported and Jesus um, responded in prayer to his father. When raising Lazarus, he had been talking to God. He, he already knew that uh, God was gonna raise him from the dead, but he wanted to pray out loud. And in the prayer, he actually says that he's praying out loud for the benefit of the people that are here, that they're listening. Um, he prayed in the upper room. He prayed uh, for himself and for his apostles that were there and for us. So you can read about that in John 16 and 17. And um, to think that he prayed for us in the way that he said, you know, I pray for those that will hear and believe the message of the apostles here. And I'm one of those, and maybe you are as well, 
that that message has been passed down through generations and um, in essence Jesus was praying for me in the upper room Jesus prayed while on the cross several short prayers um, heartfelt prayers and he prayed at his ascension again for his for his followers so that's when Jesus prayed um, you can see that it was a habit of his and and maybe what did Jesus claim maybe you've wondered like I have often or did if if Jesus is God why did he need to pray why did he talk to the Father and it has to do with with this branch of theology called Christology and understanding who Jesus was and you know, um, while he was here on earth and um, there had been several uh, false teachings that rose up after the disciples all, had all been um, martyred except for John and he, he, after he died this was generations later and so the, one of the false teachings was that Jesus really wasn't human he was just a phantom he was a spirit and he looked like he was human but he wasn't really there and it was tied to the, the idea that if he had a real body um, he would have been sinful and then there was other false teaching and on the other hand it said uh, Jesus is really just a man he was uh, he was a human um, and God used him but he wasn't really God um, and both of these were false and so they had the, the big council they brought together all the church leaders at that time and looked at all the teachings and and concluded that yes God is fully I mean excuse me Jesus is fully God and Jesus is fully human and how can that be since those things aren't the same thing well there's a couple of analogies here one is the analogy from the family for instance I am both a father and a brother I was a brother first and uh, because I have two siblings um, that makes me a brother I'm 100% their brother and I have three children so I'm 100% their dad and so I'm both 100% both at the same time and it's not like part of me is a brother and a different part of me is is a father or that sometimes I'm a brother and sometimes I'm a father it's I'm that both of those all the time the analogy breaks down in that it, it talks about my relationships rather than or the roles I have rather than my essence and so Jesus isn't God to somebody and in some relationships and God and human in, at other times to other people and so that's where the relationship is, is weak but there's an, another analogy from science it's a little better but still not perfect and that is um, the characteristic or the essence of light uh, scientists wanted to study light and find out about it and so they studied it and found out that it, it acts like waves it's energy it's, it's, when it comes in wave it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum but then other scientists later also studied light and they said ah, it has particles little particles they're, they're theoretical particles called photons and they're emitted out and they travel through through space and they reach the destination and um, they, there are particles and so they did experiments and confirmed that yes in fact light is waves and yes in fact light is particles and so they can't understand how it can be both because it seems contradictory but they just accept the truth and they've come up with the wave particle theory of light and you don't have scientists on one side arguing and writing pamphlets and them having demonstrations to uh, against the others and they both agree yes okay it is a fact we don't get it um, light is a wave particle and we don't, um, even though we don't understand it we can move on we'll say both of those things are true and so it's similar in the in theology where we say we don't understand how Jesus can be God and he can be fully human 100% uh, completely all the time both uh, but that's that's what the truth is it's beyond our, our brains to understand it. but then much of God is beyond that so what's the answer about God um, about Jesus praying um, in, in the incarnation Jesus did not stop being God but he voluntarily set aside his divine attributes 
He didn't stop being God, but he set that aside. And he was also, because he was a human, he was uh, a man, but he was filled with the Holy Spirit and talks about that several times when Jesus was filled with the Spirit and then he did this, and the Spirit led him to do that. And so he's a Spirit-filled human uh, with the attributes of God temporarily set aside. And then you can, we can read about that uh, in what's something that's called his humiliation, um, when he, being God, became man. In Philippians it says, you should have the same attitude towards one another that Christ Jesus had, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but or held on to. It. But he emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave, by looking like other men, and by sharing in human nature. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So he submitted to, to God the Father, even though he was God the Son. And, and he gave that up. He emptied himself. He didn't stop being God, uh, but he relinquished uh, the glory, you know, the power, and a lot of other things that is part of that. Then we can uh, read also about uh, how, because of that, he has empathy for us. Hebrews 4 talks about um, that we, talking about Jesus, we do not have a high priest in heaven now incapable of sympathizing with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. And so Jesus, if he was not fully human, he wouldn't be tempted. Um, he, and if you're not, if you can't sin, if there's no possibility that you could sin, then there isn't really a temptation, is there? And so it says that Jesus was in fact tempted. tempted. And so um, very much like Adam, Adam before the fall uh, was perfect as Jesus was as a human, um, but Adam chose to sin and therefore um, that changed his nature. He experienced spiritual death. Jesus, uh, perfect again, chose not to sin and because of that God um, raised him and glorified him. And so, because of his his purity, his holiness, he was able to be a sacrifice for us because um, he didn't have any sin himself that he had to die for, so he could in fact die for our sin. So, um, he is both fully God and fully man. So Jesus, why did he pray? He prayed in order to stay connected to the Father, to know his will. Jesus didn't know everything uh, like the Father did or like he did before he, his incarnation or afterwards. When he sees set that aside, it says, uh, when they said, when is the end times? And Jesus says, that the Father knows that and not even the Son knows that. And um, so Jesus needed to be connected to the Father and so it was this real important to pray in order to stay connected. And that's the same way that we're supposed to remain in Jesus and stay connected to, to Jesus and connected to the Father. We'll talk about that more shortly. So, um, Jesus, uh, since he was, did pray and he spent time with the God, he, would, he was able to make these claims in, in, in John. Several of them, John will go through them here. It says, so Jesus answered them, I tell you the solemn truth, the Son can do nothing on his own initiative on his own initiative, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. Again, I can do nothing on my own initiative, just as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And then Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak just what the Father taught me. He said, the one who belongs to God listens and responds to God's words. That's himself. You don't, he's talking to the Pharisees, you don't listen and respond because you don't belong to God. And um, for I have not spoken from my own authority, but the Father himself who sent me has commanded me what I should say and what I should speak. He knows that because he spent time 
talking to God and listening to God. It says, and I know that his commandment is eternal life. Thus the things I say, I say just as the Father has told me. So, what did Jesus teach about prayer? There's a lot of things that, that the Bible teaches us about prayer. Here's just a few things that Jesus said. He said, don't make a big show of it. Uh, the, the Pharisees at that time, they loved to stand up in crowds and, and have big, long, loud prayers so everybody could see how religious they were. But he, Jesus said, whenever you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret, secret will reward you. Um, they also, he said, when you talk to God, talk to him as you would a father. Speak normally. He um, says, when you pray, do not babble repetitiously like the Gentiles, because they think by their many words they will be heard. And you might have had, heard people from other religions who just say the same things over and over again without a lot of thought. Don't talk to, don't talk to God like that. Um, when you pray, don't ta hold any grudges. You need to forgive. Um, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your sins. Jesus said, uh, when you pray, pray for those you don't want to pray for. Um, he said, but I say to you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, Pray for those who mistreat you. So those people who you feel that aren't fair to you, are mistreating you, they need to go on your prayer list and pray for them. He said, don't give up. There were two, two parables he talked about. Um, uh, Luke 11, he, he talks about, so suppose one of you has a friend um, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, let me have three loaves of bread. And the story, as the story goes, the guy's asking for bread because he's got some visitors at night. And the, guy's, the guy inside the house says, hey, I'm, we're in bed, go away. And uh, finally, because the guy downstairs keeps knocking and knocking, he says, hey, you know, I'm not gonna get any sleep unless I go give him some bread. And so he does that. And Jesus says, your heavenly father isn't like that guy in the house. Um, he wants to give you things, but you need to be continually persistent in asking for them. Uh, and that keeps us in contact with, with the Father when we're um, asking him for our needs. Uh, and he told another parable about the persistent widow um, to show them they should always pray and not lose heart. Um, she, she asks the judge to, to take up her case and he doesn't want to and he says no and he can't be bothered, but if this, eventually because of her persistence he takes her case and you know, just to quit badgering her again god isn't like that towards us um, he wants to grant us what we need but he, jesus is teaching here that he wants us to be persistent and keep on praying and keep on asking keep on knocking you know the verses that surrounding that so then he gave a model and he, when, he, when the disciples asked him, teach us to pray, he said, pray like this. He didn't say, use these words. You don't have to only say these words. And it's not wrong to say the Lord's Prayer um, every week or as often as you want, but you don't have to just pray these words. It, it's the principles, the ideas behind it. So, our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. And may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's adoring. That's recognizing God who he is and and how majestic he is, at the same time recognizing that we get to call him Father because we're his children. And then give us our daily bread. We can ask for the things we need. He expects us to come like children to, to a father to, to ask for those things, and he's happy to give them. And then we need also forgiveness. And so we need to ask God for forgiveness, and we need to be forgiving others too that have offended us. And do not lead us in temptation. To deliver us from the evil one. So we need to pray for strength to, to withstand temptation. Um, so what should we do? So think of someone you haven't talked to in years. This picture from 1977, my freshman year of college. I'm in there somewhere if you want to try to find me. Um, the seven other friends um, 
over the years, um, like one of the guys, he left at the end of that semester and I haven't talked to him since. Um, the other, there's another two or three that um, you know, I, I knew the rest of that year or um, in following years uh, after graduation. But there's three of those guys who I've kept in touch with since we graduated in 81. And um, every time I'm back in the U.S., I try to see if we can, can meet up and, and um, keep that friendship going. And so part of, of keeping a relationship strong is regular communication, and, and we do that with God. Well, there was another freshman that year at the same school. Um, you might recognize her. Um, and she's still around. We still have a relationship. I talk to her. She's right here. Um, and it's, it's that communication that I have with my wife, Jane, that is, is mirrored in, in what it should be with my Heavenly Father, that I'm regularly talking to Him and building that relationship and uh, getting His ideas for me and things like that. Then uh, prayer is so important in keeping relationships and connecting. Pray is staying, praying is staying connected to God. And that's what Jesus did, and that's what we get to do. Staying connected, um, John 15, uh, Jesus said to his disciples, apostles, he said, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me, and I in him, there is much fruit, because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. So, in order to be fruitful in our lives, uh, and may have fruit for God's kingdom, we need to remain in him. And we do that by staying connected in prayer. Um, our hearts are drawn towards that which we give our time and attention to. Jesus talked about this as far as money says, if you, all your, your treasure is here on earth, your heart is going to be wrapped up in that as well. And so if, our, uh, if we give our time and attention to God our Father and spending time talking to Him and, and our attention, then that's going to, our heart's going to follow after that um, and be uh, more strongly connected to God our Father. Here's some suggestions for, for praying. Um, you can use a prayer calendar. There is one that... Um, is uh, in an email sent out from GCC. You can open that and download it. And it's a prayer calendar it starts uh, today on the 14th. And it's 21 days. It goes until the, first, the day before Easter. And it has uh, three things. It says there, each day you can pray for whatever's on your heart, pray for one person you know, and pray for the items listed on each day below. So that, that's an aid if you want to use a, a prayer calendar. Then there's also um, uh, the types of prayer you can look at, different kinds of prayer. Again, on that, that same handout, there's, it shows uh, eight different types of prayer there and um, some uh, prayer expressions, and you can read about those. And that might help you uh, to know um, some ways that you can, can pray. Then there's uh, the ones that I... I use it's the sum of those of those eight. There's four of them, and, and those four together form the word acts, and it helps me to remember um, adoration. That's worshiping God and, and concentrating on His attributes, His holiness, all the characteristics of God, and uh, worshiping Him in adoration. Uh, the next one is confession. I don't want there to be anything between God and me when I'm talking to Him, and so I need to keep short accounts and 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 confess those, those things I, I did, or those things I did, failed to do and should have, or the thoughts that I had. And I need to, this confession is, is part of that prayer. And it's a response after worshiping Him and seeing how great He is, then it shows how needful I am. And then there's thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for His forgiveness and for all the blessings He's given us. And um, so much to be thankful for. And then supplication is just asking. All the things that, that I want to ask God about, my daily bread and whatever else. And it might be praying for myself or for my family or for others. 
um, or my nation or whatever. Supplication. Some more ideas about prayer. Um, find a good place to pray uh, with minimal distractions. Although you can pray while you're walking, maybe you can pray about the things you're walking by or around. If you were to walk around the, the city center, maybe you could pray for the government and the, the leaders um, here locally. Uh, choose an approach, appropriate body position. In some cases you might want to stand, um, sometimes kneel, sometimes sit, sometimes lay face down, sometimes raise your arms, whatever is appropriate for the, the praying that you're doing. Um, but you should be comfortable. Um, uh, in order to, to spend time in prayer, you need to physically be able to do that and to be comfortable, but not too comfortable if you're sleeping. Um, use a journal or a tablet or a pad or paper. Um, write out your prayers. That might help you to focus, particularly if your thoughts are wandering. If you can write it in, in a, you write it by hand and keep it in a journal, or you can type it out on the computer and save it as a file. And then the advantage of that is you might be able to look at those things later and see how God answered your prayers and what's happened in the time since you prayed. You can go back decades if you have a long long prayer journey. Um, you can also add a pad of paper or your phone or something. You can list distracting to-do thoughts. So maybe you're praying uh, prayers of thanksgiving and you're praying thankful for your motorcycle and it gets you around and everything and you go, oh yeah, I need to I need to take it in for a service. And then you start thinking about, oh, I need to call and get that service. And, you know, and you, your, I, your thoughts move away from praying and to, towards things you need to do. And so Having a, a list you can write down, motorcycle service, and then you won't forget it. It's on your list of things to do. And then you can set that aside and keep on uh, praying through whatever it is you're thanking God for. Um, and then you, another thing is you can intersperse times of, of prayer with quiet listening. It's not one-way communication. You should be quiet and see what God might be speaking to your heart. Uh, reading psalms or other scriptures, um, or praying through those. Read a little bit and, and pray how that uh, applies to you and, and those thoughts, worshiping God in that way, or asking God for those things or whatever. Or you might have a, a time of, of listening to some praise music um, in, between, in between times of, of prayer. And so you can do that as well. Um, Final thoughts, if you're listening to this on uh, on March 14th and you're in Bali, it is Hari Nippi, and, and we as believers, as Christ followers, have been given a gift. that We have a day of silence, um, and there should be no motorcycles or people banging drums as they walk by your house, or cars or airplanes flying or phone calls. You've got uninterrupted, uninterrupted time in silence that you can spend at least part of that. Um, in prayer, talking to God and, and worshiping Him. And so I would encourage you to do that today. Take advantage of it and, um, and build that connection and strengthen that relationship that you have with the Father. Have a, a blessed day. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Wait.